Hey guys, today we are drawing three dimensional shapes and shading them. If I go too fast in this video, please pause the video and work at your own pace. Now I've started off with the vertical line and V-shape for my cube and connecting those lines together. There are many different ways to draw a cube and if you need help practicing this first, you can click the card up top and practice drawing three dimensional shapes. Now for my pyramid, I'm starting again with a vertical line and a V-shape on the bottom with two triangles connected together. Both of these shapes are drawn in two-point perspective. And again, there's many different ways to draw these. Now for my sphere, I'm simply tracing a glass because a sphere is simply a circle. Now I'm ready to shade and I'm gonna start off with the pyramid. The left-hand side will be darker than the right and I'm going to draw a shadow down here, which will simply be a stretched out triangle. As I begin to shade, the left hand side is going to be a lot darker than the right hand because this will be the part that's in shadow. I begin the side with the lighter value, notice that I'm simply leaving my sketchy lines and I haven't blended anything quite yet. As I fill in the shadow, I'm simply shading a, a more of a medium shade in here. Now using a blending stick or your finger, if you don't have a blending stick, I'm going to gently start blending these shades together. I'm using a lot less pressure with the right hand side because I want this value to stay light. Using a firm pressure on the left, I'm making sure that I'm blending the entire thing for that darker value. And for the shadow, you want to keep it soft. So as I blend, I'm using the stick to actually get a little bit of value outside of that shadow. The next step is to use an eraser and sharpen up what I have over blended. So using my eraser to make straight solid lines along the edge of my pyramid, I'm going to actually use a paintbrush to wipe away my shavings so I don't have any smudges or smears. The final step is to take my softer pencil, a darker pencil, and if you're only using one pencil, that's fine, just use a harder pressure, is you're going to actually go back and retrace those lines in the darker edge to really give a fine, crisp edge to your pyramid. I decided I'm going to add a highlight in here, and to do that, all I did was take my eraser, erase a line, and blend it back in. All right, I'm ready to start shading the cube. So all three sides will have different values and I'm going to go with the same thing as the pyramid and have my left-hand side be the darkest value. Using a heavy-handed pressure, I've shaded the entire left-hand side with my darkest value. Now for my right hand side, I'm going to be using a medium value. So using a little less pressure and making it a little lighter. For the top, this will be my lightest side. So I simply shaded a tiny little bit. I'm also going to add a shadow, which again is just the stretched out version of the shape that casts onto the floor. Again, using a blending stump or your finger, you wanna go in and very firmly blend the darkest values. And again, using less pressure for your lighter values, make sure you evenly blend all of your shades. Now 
Remember that your shadow is not a solid figure, so the edges should be softened and almost blurry. I usually make my shadows darker closer to the shape. Now the next step, again, is to take an eraser and erase up those lines so they are nice and crisp. Now that I've finished erasing and refining, it's time to go back with my heavier pencil and redo those edges and outlines to really give my cube a nice crisp look. Finally, I'm using that darker pencil again to go back and add a little bit of darkness to the edge of my shadow to give a little bit of depth. All right, now that my cube is done, I'm ready to work on the sphere. And the sphere actually gets shaded in three layers. First, we have this smaller circle that we're going to leave white. The second outer circle is going to be shaded a lot lighter. This is my lightest value. This bigger chunk will be our darkest value and the outline edge will be a medium value. Each of these circle layers will be a different value. Being careful not to shade in that first circle I'm going to use my lightest value around that circle. The next layer is my darkest layer, so I'm going to use a heavier pressure to fill that in. And the outer layer is a little lighter, so this will be a medium value. Now I'm going to add a shadow, and this shadow will actually be in two parts. First, I'm going to add a little bit of an oval coming out from underneath my sphere, and this will be the darkest shadow. Then I'm going to cast another shadow out outside of that, and that will be a lighter value. After filling in my shadow, I'm ready to blend. Now using my blending stick or your finger, I'm going to gently start in a circular pattern going around that white part, being very careful not to blend into it. I'm then going to gently smudge the edge of that so it looks almost blurry, and then work my way out. Once I've blended my lightest section, I'm going to use the blending stump to actually smooth these sections together and create a middle value in between them.
Working my way out and around, I'm going to blend the entire sphere. that I need to make that core shadow there a little bit darker so I'm going back in with my softer pencil and I'm going to add a darker shadow and then blend that in. Notice that I've kept that bottom edge of the sphere a little bit lighter. As I'm blending my shadow, remember that a shadow should not have hard lines and the edges should be a little bit blurry to keep it looking like a shadow and not a solid figure. Next, I'm going to take my eraser to clean up the edges of my sphere. Final touch is to go back with my blending stump and clean up any imperfections. And there we have our three dimensional shaded shapes. And if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and like.